going? It's JT from Hoagie's Garage, um, giving you a little bit of an update on the Impala project that I am doing right now. The Impala is not here, as you can see, but the engine is here. This is the Golan 383 LT1, uh, obviously V8. It's going to be transplanted into the Impala in the coming months. Um, right now, the current status is OptiSparks on timing cover, oil pan. Uh, internals are all done. I have one cylinder head on. It's a uh, Trickflow, um, obviously aluminum cylinder head, uh, bolted down with ARP bolts and done and done. Um, short of push rods, rocker arms, all that stuff uh, that's coming next. But I wanted to sort of do a walkthrough on how to put the driver side cylinder head on. It's, it's kind of a process and I mean this is new to me I, this is my first time I did this on this type of motor so um, you know basically my uh, Bible for this has been uh, the internet of course just looking up things but uh, I've been using this how-to guide which uh, everybody seems to recommend got on Amazon um, and of course my trick flow instructions which uh, one guy had a really good point online I don't even know where I read it but he said if you're doing something like this, yeah, you know, the factory bolting instructions, all that torque specs, everything makes sense. But when you go with something like a trick flow, you kind of want to stick with the trick flow instructions, which they actually match up with the LT1 book. So with that being said, I'm kind of using both just to sort of reference it. A um, couple other things I am using. Uh, this is the ARP uh, fastener lubricant, Molly lube, whatever you want to call it. This goes on the heads of the bolts and the washers. So when we torque it down, it is not being having resistance to it so it's actually getting the right torque rating on the uh, angle gauge the other thing I'm using is this uh, Loctite thread sealant stick uh, there's a lot of holes in here that do go into water jackets and there's coolant that flows around them so you have to seal your threads the top row most times you don't but uh, I think it was this book it did say sometimes that these are drilled all the way through so it's just smart to put the thread sealant on all of them. It's not really that big of a deal. It's actually like really, almost like hand cream the way it goes on there. But um, you just have to make sure not to mix it with the Molly Lube on the heads, on the heads of the bolts. Um, and then finally, this is sort of overkill, but the uh, other thing I've been doing is uh, chasing the threads. It's not a tap, it's a chase. You spin this in, just sort of cleans them out. And this block is flawless. Golan did a, a nice job with it. Um, I don't have any issues. I've read things on the internet, people disliking Golan, but they didn't sponsor this or anything. This is who we picked to build it. And you know, with that being said, though, I haven't seen any issues thus far with anything. The block's really clean and nice. Uh, threads are fine. So this is kind of unnecessary, but um, it was like a little $15 tool. Uh, came with a bunch of sizes. Just sort of clean them out instead before putting your bolts in. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is sort of walk through this, talk you through what I'm doing. If you disagree, that's cool. Maybe leave a comment. But uh, this is the LT1 cylinder head sort of walk through. Uh, I have a rotating engine stand here. I'm going to take it and spin it so I've got a flat, you know, the, the, this driver side bank of cylinders is flat on top. So that'll be my first move and then uh, move to the gaskets and the head and you can kind of follow along as I go. It shouldn't be not going to go too crazy thorough, but uh, you know, as far as like giving you the basic info, so you kind of have an idea. And I'd say uh, don't be so intimidated if it's something you're thinking of doing, because it's not really brain surgery. You can tell I'm not in a hermetically sealed lab like a Nissan GTR engine, but you know, it is something you want to keep clean for the most part. Try not to oil up, get water, oil, um, antifreeze, whatever you have, you know, floating around in the garage. So. Um, First step, I'm going to rotate and then we'll start the install. So I've rotated the engine so the driver's side is totally flat. It does make it easier to work on. It's not really a necessity, but with a V8, you know, it is nice. Right here is a Felpro head gasket. Came with the engine um, from Golan. It actually lines up, you really can't screw this up. And you just got to sort of make sure your holes are lined up and there is a uh, some dowel pins right here you just sort of push it down onto them kind of like that and you can tell it doesn't fully seat like it's not a perfectly flat fit on there but the head's going to do most of that and when we tighten the bolts it'll be okay um, you know when you look at these instructions they say you know there is some overlap some different spots uh, 
you know, line up weird or whatever, but just so the bolt heads are perfect and the cylinders are perfect and everything else is good, you're fine. I was sort of worried about these spots on the block that were painted or rusty. I was like, oh no, you know, this is going to be awful. I have to sand these down. But you can tell the gaskets, um, wherever the gasket is, that's where it needs to be clean. So just make sure your block is decked, as they say, totally clean, um, no oil or anything like that, and put that on there. And that's the, the gasket. Pretty simple. Next up is the Trick Flow head. And this is slightly tricky to get lined up because you don't want to mess anything up as far as the uh, the gasket. You don't want to nick it or ruin it or anything like that. For being aluminum heads, they're not exactly light. I'd say a good 20 pounds or so each. But if you kind of have a general idea where the bottom bolt heads are that go along this, this bottom rail right here, you can sort of set it here, get them close, and then that's it. It's on the dowels. It's not going anywhere. And, and now that it's flat, that the engine's rotated, I don't really have to worry about it falling off or anything. So the next move then is to figure out our bolts. All right, so for this part, I have moved over to the workbench and I'm gonna show you how to do one of these bolts and you can sort of uh, figure the rest out on your own because they all do the same thing. Cause like I said, I'm gonna thread seal all of them just because I'm paranoid like that. Um, excuse the mess on my workbench. There's uh, about 10 projects going on in here, I feel like. But anyways, um, this is the ARP uh, head bolt. The uh, spec for this motor for the small block Chevy. Uh, the sticker's just sitting here because it's sitting here. They didn't sponsor this or anything, but um, in all honesty, they're kind of well known as being one of the best out there. So we have ARP. Uh, so first off, I'm going to do the thread sealing last, but the first thing I'm going to do is use this uh, Molly lube or whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It's meant to basically make the tightening process all the same so you don't have like a dry uh, head bolt, uh, head of the head bolt, you know, on metal and sort of creating more friction so your torque is off compared to the other ones or vice versa. They say use this stuff because it's kind of equal and it's it's a lot slipperier than motor oil. Some people do motor oil. Honestly, I think whatever you decide to use, as long as it's something consistent on all of your bolts, you're going to be okay. Um, so what I do is I put a little bit of this just along the top. And it's kind of tough to squeeze out because it is sort of thicker. But um, I kind of try to hold this up here so you can see. I just have a coating of it along there. The washer, there's two sides to it. There's a flat side and then the side with uh, like a divot inside or like a depression. The depression goes up towards the head bolt. So you'll notice that as I start to do this, you start to kind of for not you run out of places to hold on to all this because you're getting uh, grease and thread seal and everything all over. Now what that did was it made the washer connect with the uh, thread assembly lube, whatever you want to call this stuff, the molly lube. Now the other thing I'll do here, and this could be overkill, I don't know, but I like to put it on this part too, right here, on the bottom of the washer. So now we have a lubricated surface everywhere it's going to be touching. Um, finally, you take the Loctite thread sealant stick, and you just, these are cool because you don't really have to you know, make a mess. It's just sort of like applying a chapstick or something. You just smear it on there. And I mean, I like to put a decent amount, but it's not totally covered. So I'll hold that up there. That's my thread sealant. And they all work the same way. I would recommend that you do one at a time. So do one of these, walk over, finger tighten into the engine, come back, do the next one. It is a, you know, repetitive process, but at the same time, you know, each one's right and it's in there just waiting like because if I did these and just set them right here there's a chance I'm gonna contaminate them drop them on the ground uh, anything like that so that's how to prepare these bolts it is kind of messy as you can see but at the same time if you do all that correctly uh, you shouldn't have any problems with the torque specs or the head bolts leaking So it's probably a little late to tell you this uh, since, unless you're watching this before you actually work on your engine, 
these bolts down here, this whole length, I guess you'd call this the bottom of the head, these are all the short ones. There are, uh, I believe, three, six, eight of them. Yeah, eight of those. Um, and then there's two bolts that are a medium length. Those go on the ends of the top of the cylinder head, which would be under the valve cover, uh, next to the springs and valves and all that. And then the longest bolts go across the very top row and then the middle three. So that it's kind of tricky and when you get that big box, box of bolts, you're like, where do these all go? So that's kind of that tip. They're all in there. I finger tighten them and then I used one of those uh, little speed wrench thingies to just sort of get them all sort of snug. Now the next move is to torque every bolt to 22 foot-pounds. Uh, I do have right here a torque wrench. It's a dial one, where you, you know, pretty standard. And you do have to follow the sequence of them inside the, uh, the cylinder head. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. And I do have my sequence map, I guess you want to call it, sitting right here so I don't screw up. I mean, there's honestly uh, no shame in doing that, you should, unless you're like a pro and you've done this a million times, which uh, I don't know why you're watching this. But uh, so I'm going to follow the sequence and torque these down, and that'll be the first uh, round of tightening on the LT1 cylinder head. So the final step of torquing these head bolts down is the uh, angle, torque, meter, gauge, whatever you want to call it, uh, piece of it. There isn't really a specific torque spec. Everybody says there is, but the trick flow heads say to use one of these because that's also what the factory says, I guess. Um, basically, these top uh, set of bolts, the ones all under the valve cover, are 80 degrees in the bottom ones that are outside the valve cover at the bottom of the head are 67 degrees. And what that means is very simple. I'm not going to go into all the, how this works and uh, give you a full walkthrough on the best way to use an angle meter here, but um, this attaches in between the uh, breaker bar here and the socket. And it's kind of just basically a little readout that tells you how far your sweep is on the bolt. So these ones we're going to put to 80 and um, I've seen guys online they take this little outrigger here and they catch a bolt through it uh, something like that and the way I'm doing it I mean you could uh, you know knock it or say it's wrong but it's pretty darn close I'm just kinda locking my hand on here and holding it and I'm also putting a I have a jack handle uh, extension on my breaker bar I don't have a real long breaker bar this one's like 14 inch or 12 inch but this gives you some more swing so I'm actually on the number two bolt here, if you notice, because uh, my first take on this, it didn't, uh, the camera died, so lovely. Uh, so this one is also 80, and I'm going to start to swing here, and if you notice, I sort of am locking this down, and as I pull it, it's kind of slow, you don't want to go backwards, but you also want to keep in mind uh, where it's at. And you just want to go, and it, it's really not crazy torqued uh, like I thought it would be, but uh, without trying to move this part, because you can see that sort of moves, uh, you just kind of set it at zero there, and then as you uh, tighten this guy, you can see the needle moves on there like so. Uh, my engine stand is on wheels, so I'm sort of bracing it with my feet here, trying to make sure it doesn't move. There's 60. I need about uh, 20 more degrees here if I can manage that, so we'll see if I can, without being too inaccurate here and that's about 80 right there maybe just another pull for good measure and that's it that bolts done and I follow the sequence going through and doing them all um, like I said it's not really the most it doesn't seem so technical but in the same sense I guess it kind of is they say it's more accurate than a torque uh, torque wrench so um, like you said just follow the sequence go through Make sure you're switching to 67 on the outer bolts, and after that, it's torqued up there, and it's that's it. The head's done as far as it, it needs to be, short of valve covers and 
headers and things like that. So um, with that being said, I'm going to run through these and uh, see what's what after I finish these all up. So I ran through all the bolts here. Uh, like I said, the ones under the valve cover, 80 degrees. The ones outside the valve cover at the bottom, 67 degrees. Following the specific sequence of tightening, you do that with your angle gauge meter, torque meter, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, TrickFlow does say you can retorque these after your break-in period, but not fully necessary. Um, I'll be honest, I, I'm kind of surprised. I don't, I can't really gauge the torque on the angle meter, how tight these need to be. I have heard that these trick flow heads or most aluminum heads don't take that gorilla torque like a big cast iron one would but um, it, I mean just kind of me sharing uh, it's my learning on this whole thing I'm not really uh, like I said it's all new to me but um, I don't know I'd give this a uh, scale of 1 to 10 maybe a 7 ish it, you know you just got to be a little bit patient with it take your time follow the steps follow the sequences and you do need to buy some extra supplies. I had to buy the angle meter, I had to buy the thread sealant, assembly lube, um, head bolts to go with this. So next step is um, all the stuff that bolts into the cylinder heads. Rockers, push rods, uh, retainers, all those pieces, parts that go into there. And uh, then just gonna start doing other auxiliary items, water pump, uh, headers will go on and uh, moving from there. So this is kind of my first uh, video on the Impala project. It's on hoagiesgarage.com if you want to check it out. If you're looking at this after it's already done, you can kind of uh, scroll down and see the progress. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it on this. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If uh, it was, give a like, a thumbs up. Uh, if it wasn't, let me know why in the comments. But uh, finally, cylinder head, LT1, 383 stroked by Golan V8 going into 96 Impala SS. And thanks again. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.